Stacy Becker, white label interior design. And uh, we met actually over in Sancadia uh, for a client was purchasing over there. And um, I think pretty instantly connected just in terms of the way we communicate and then kind of our style and everything. And, and so um, I wanted to bring you on here to kind of just pick your brain about, you know, obviously your side of the world, interior design and um, all the different projects you're working on. Um, the services that you provide, you know, for, for people who are kind of hunkering down during this time and um, really thinking, looking at their walls and thinking, I want to make improvements or I want to move or I want to get a secondary home. Um, yep. And I think that uh, you just add a lot of value on that front because again, when you hire someone to help you with all those things, you're getting kind of an outside perspective um, versus you just kind of sitting and, and overthinking sure. a simple project that, you know, something that you could easily execute and get it out. Um, yeah. When you internalize that and you're like looking at all these different options, it's really hard to know which way to go. So I could see yeah. how hiring against a professional like yourself um, just saves so much time and headache and hassle. Um, yeah. And then also kind of want to touch on, you know, the different little improvements people can make, um, you know, whether just very simple, basic to more of the extremes that will kind of increase your property value um, and then kind of everything basically in between. So I'll let you kind of maybe introduce yourself and, and talk yeah. a little bit about how you started kind of um, in this in this world and, and we'll dive in. Thanks again for having me, Stacey Becker. I'm principal and lead designer for White Label Interiors. We um, are in the greater Seattle area, but we do extend towards Suncadia. Uh, we're signing some contracts in Lake Chelan and hopefully Seabrook coming up soon here. So we love the primary home market within Seattle, but the secondary home market is so important for us. We're the lifestyle. We love to have fun, golf, ski, um, be on the beach, all those good things. So um, love love expanding to, again, the primary to the secondary homes. Um, I will say our bread and butter is new construction full scope homes. So we help design and select all the finishes and materials for those homes and then outfit them with all the furnishings as well. So when we say full scope, it is you know, I, I, in a cheeky way, refer to it as light bulb to light bulb. So from the idea to actually screwing in the last light bulb as we're backing out and you are moving in. So um, that is our favorite, but we do all types of remodels. Um, if you need a great new revamp on, say, your home office, for instance, then uh, we do all types of those projects as well. So from, from large to small. And um, I will say you had just mentioned something about, you know, sitting around your own space and kind of ruminating on what it is that you want to do. And I think that one of our main services is that we help you take your 1000 ideas on Pinterest or house or Instagram, wherever, and we're helping to distill them to something that's really tangible for your home. I think a lot of people can get overwhelmed by just being on Instagram for honestly, maybe too many hours or saving so many things on Pinterest that they can't really see what it is that actually would apply to them. So a part of that is really educating um, or a part of our service is really educating them and helping them understand what works in their home, maybe what doesn't or why they like something that they like or dislike for that matter, because that's just as informative. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I, sometimes I have to remind myself that we're, um, we're deciphering things. Yeah. As a living. Yeah. So yeah, that all that information. Good. Yeah. And I know also part of that is when someone has speaking to, you know, what inspires someone to actually do a remodel or change the aesthetics of their home. Um, like, you pick a piece of maybe that's most important to them. Like, you know, maybe it's a rug or, you know, yeah. we have actually a barn table in our house, which was kind of like the center piece of our home. And we kind of just built everything around that. Right. In it's terms nice. of like coloring, yeah. that sort of thing. And so you, you'd be able to help with people. And I think people at that point, they pick something they really like, but don't know how to branch out of that and then pick all the things that, that go with it. Right. To yeah. Create Exactly. Yeah. Really well said. And using something like that as a perfect example, you know, if there's something that you really cherish, um, we use rugs a lot because, um, you know, if you buy a really great rug, it's going to be around for generations. So some of our clients have had rugs in their family for a really long time. So, um, or it's a table or it's a piece of art. It could be a piece of child's art, you know, something and, and kind of how do we take little hints from that piece and expand it into all of the 
other supporting elements like dining chairs, for example, for you or art in the room or window treatment. So yeah, I, I love to have um, a good reason to do something. It's fun to kind of create a space out of nothing. But I think um, I, one of my college professors said that when we're designing with parameters, we actually get a lot more creative. So if we have that kind of kickoff point, not just Pinterest is the limit or the sky's the limit, then it's a really nice way to get some more personal components too. Yeah, it helps you focus in on something yeah. and then it helps be able to do something a little more creative. Exactly. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Um, what are, I guess, looking at the um, secondary home market, because um, it's something that's very popular. Like I mentioned, we met, met at Suncadia, but I, and I know yeah. you're doing tons of work over there in the larger homes and in the townhomes that are, are just being built over there. Um, are, are you seeing any trends there? Um, obviously people wanting your help because it's hard to get back and forth over, over the past um, for someone trying to do it on their own. Um, sure. Maybe you could talk a little bit about, about that market as well. Well, we have two offices. So we've got the Seattle office. So we're in Soto and then we've got a Roslyn office as well, which serves um, literally serves us really well. And then, and those that we serve for having the two offices and we're over there weekly. So we are there frequently. Um, even when it snows over the past, we still head over cause it's adventure. Right. Um, but in terms of trends, well, you and I both know second homes are selling like hotcakes there. It's a, it's a really expensive way to not look at the same four walls you've been looking at through all of COVID-19. Um, and also I just think that people really want to branch out. Um, I mean, to, to really be able to experience a different space and so drastically so when you go over the paths, you know, it's a 90 minute drive and you're in a completely different environment. So people are really favoring that location for that reason. And I will say in terms of trends in Suncadia, we refer to it in our office as Suncadia 2.0. Let's not do the lodgy, you know, what we know is traditional lodge style. And so there's a lot more contemporary design coming, a lot of the shed roofs, like the really clean um, lines and more simple materials, but also letting things be what we would refer to as being honest. So a wood is the wood, the concrete is the concrete. We're not gussing it up a lot, yeah. um, but also, we can kind of waver. Sometimes people, well, first of all, there's a lot more full-time people that are going to be in Sencadia in the coming months and years being so remote. So we are designing more for full-time homes over there. Um, but also the second home, sometimes people want to do something a little different. They don't want to do what they have in their Wallingford house. They want to do something that is maybe pushing the envelope or a little bit more serene than what they have with, you know, the total homeschooling thing here in the city. So style wise, it really ranges based on clients, but um, I think people come into it really kind of wanting to have some fun, which yep. is great. Yep. Yeah. It's an outlet for people too, right? It's very yeah. exciting. Secondary home, getting out of your space. Yeah. Something different and new. And actually it's forced a lot of people to do those things, which they normally wouldn't have done. I know ourselves, we purchased a home down in Arizona Never right. done that unless you know COVID really had hit because there was Arizona wasn't even on our radar, right? But yeah, thinking about the different ways that you can get in the sun and get a new scenery and, and also have an investment to tell you the truth because a lot of the again yeah. the Sincadia properties, or let's say you buy a you know property in the islands because that's that's also another secondary home market that's just crazy right now. Um, you know, you could turn around and I rent those, yeah, Airbnb. Yeah, I'll get up there. How do I get up there? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any uh, tips and tricks that you have, I guess, for the people who are um, staying, you know, they're basically looking at their walls and, and wanting to kind of think, well, what can I do here to um, make it easier for maybe work from home or just kind of easy things that you could do to kind of um, reinvent your space and, and just make sure. it feel a little bit newer? Yeah. Yeah. I've been doing that personally, actually. And so I've been thinking about what this means, not only for myself, but it's nice to kind of be in the client position sometimes, or rather my husband is actually. Um, but I think that a few of the key things are using some of this time to really declutter and organize your space. Um, I don't know if you've seen the home edit on Netflix, but what a perfect, perfectly timed Netflix launch because people are just around their homes. So 
but what that means is to really just declutter, like clean the spaces, have a clean desk, have a clean dining table, kitchen counter, coffee table, end tables, all of those horizontal surfaces, get them clean and just less cluttered. So then you don't have to focus on all of these little things sitting around. I felt like it was time to get a Peloton, especially with COVID and just being less mobile. So that was a perfect lunch for me to redo. We have a small house. So the Peloton now lives in our primary bedroom. But what I started to do was now shop my own house. I was like, it's time. Let's do a total revamp. And so, you know, what was in the dining room came into the bedroom. What was in the bedroom went into the you know, kind of down the hallway. And we, so just do like an internal shuffle. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to leave this, the house. And even by just placing art somewhere that, you know, it hasn't been for the last five years, it's, it really does invigorate the space. Um, I've even worked with someone in a retail store before who she was like, this is a little woo woo, but things have energy, right? And you have to kind of shuffle them around. So they're kind of they're getting a different perspective and you're getting your own different perspective on things from time to time. So shopping my own house is one of the favorite tricks. Yeah, yeah. We've, been, we've done, the, I've been calling it the COVID cleanup. Um, yeah. Like basically right. it's like kind of purging, organizing. And we're actually this week, my husband and I have been doing it. Um, just taking one little nook at a time. And we kind of already yeah. did it earlier this year, but it's amazing how much you clutter and move things around and yeah. It's just, okay, this is it. So we go through everything. And then it's, even though those, let's say the shelves are not open or the drawers are not open or the closet doors are shut, it actually has a different feel when you just walk into the house. It just feels lighter. It's the weirdest yes. thing. It's just like, whew. it is. So, and so that I guess is probably where everyone needs to start is, is just organizing and getting rid of stuff and donating and yeah. doing all that sort of thing, purging basically. Definitely. And to have that opportunity to just even check it off mentally, because we can come into our homes and I mean, how many times have I cleaned up my garage in the last six months? I mean, that <laughs> keeps happening, but every time I do it, it's just, you know, it's at least peaceful and quiet for a second. Right. And I, I know that it's checked off my list for what the next 14 days and then we'll address it again. But, um, I also have toddlers. So that's the thing. That's part of my reality. <laughs> yeah, any tips I guess, for those who have, um, you know, children at home, different things that they could do to organize and, and keep things kind of out of the way? Sure. Um, my recent very affordable investment was to actually buy some of those Ikea bins that go in the Ikea cubbies. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to just kind of shove them in, but now the kids, they're old enough. They're three and four, five, I should say. So they know that the cars live in this bin and these things, um, you know, the Barbies live in this bin so they can really be tucked away. And from the outside, it just looks like a much more refined Ikea shelf, you know? Um, but also I, I'm a big fan of kind of living with less anyway. And my kids have just gotten adjusted to that. Um, they didn't really have a choice, to be honest. So there was no adjustment, but um, just purging what we can and not kind of holding on to a bunch of material things. And to be honest, I don't even know if I should say this out loud, but I throw or give away a lot of things that my kids don't even know yeah. that I. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's true, right? And you can't just keep all the toys. I mean, they, they grow. No. And ages and you can't keep everything yeah. so if you can you know uh, donate to to let the less fortunate yeah. or, you know, have it just that also feels good too so it does yeah. agreed agreed so yeah my tip is hide it or sneak it away <laughs> so if you're going to take it to I guess the next level to where you're going to actually spend a little bit of money obviously you're going to have to stay in the home while you're kind of not remodeling but maybe you're buying new furniture or kind of rearranging spaces do you have any kind of hacks or tips or trip um tips or tricks for that yeah i think that um well one thing in regards to you know kind of prepping your home or making this plan right is that every literally everyone in the world is thinking about this right now so I think getting ahead of it and making this plan, I think you and I had touched on this previously where just, just to try to be two steps ahead of everyone else. So, um, you know, the doorknobs are a great place to start. You and I had touched on that in terms of um, just a way to give a really fresh look, but odds are there could be some low stock for doorknobs because a lot of people are thinking about this as well. Um, 
And maybe that means going to Home Depot instead of ordering it online to actually see what's um, you know, around and locally stocked. But there's a I I was thinking about this in terms of some some categories, you know. So if you want to just spend a little bit of money, what can what are some good things to consider on up to, you know, really doing like the doorknobs and the doors and the millwork, stuff like that. So um so do you mind if I kind of, I was like thinking about some price points. So, yeah. okay. Um, so some things that I was thinking about were, you know, say if you, if there's, you know, $250 that you want to spend, what are some things that you could buy for $250, whether it's a single thing or multiple, but I was thinking, um, you know, some small furniture pieces. So like, um, you know, modify a nightstand or do you need a new reading lamp or things like that, but smaller pieces of furniture can be bought pretty affordably and locally as well. Um, obviously we're being safe with COVID and all of that, but I think um, also I will say shop during the week because there's just less people out and about. Um, but smaller pieces of furniture and lighting like that really work in the, in the, the $250 budget. And then some of my other notes were, you know, say if you had $500, like support some local artists, buy some artwork, um, you can buy some great art for even much less than 50 or uh, $500. And what a cool way to really update your space, whether it's in a really great custom frame or something that's, you know, off the shelf from, um, you know, Target or even the local like thrift store. So um, plus the artist will thank you. Um, when you get up to like a thousand or 5,000 or $10,000 that you want to spend or, or I've been saving away to just, you know, spend on a really good time. Um, I would start looking at, you know, a rug is a really great place to start. Again, if you, if you spend a thousand, I mean, you're balling if you're spending five to $10,000 on a rug, but those rugs will be around for generations. So don't be afraid to invest in those. Um, a bed, you know, a really great headboard, um, some of the larger furniture pieces. And if you're in that $5,000 range, I would strongly consider thinking about window treatments, updating those things that we never really shop for, but as soon as we address it in our house, it's a totally different space. And then some of the larger ticket items um, that can kind of add up as you multiply them, but are actually really easy to do in your own home would be to like replace the kitchen faucet or the shower head that's been dripping forever. You can, I promise. Anyone that's listening to this can do it themselves. I've done it. It's possible. Just find that YouTube video and it's surprisingly easy. So you can take that old 1985 kitchen faucet and make it into, um, you know, something really affordable and easy to do. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Those are all really great tips. And once you get up into that, you know, category two, then you're, I mean, when I look at a property and the things of updating, the ones that make the most impact that you normally would not think about would be the millwork, the base, the trim, the doors, right? Um, door knobs, the you know your light fixtures, like you said, even the um, the shower head. Um, thought, I mean, all those things um, really just liven the space up. Um, yep. and then you get into you know flooring and all that sort of thing. But I really do. I'm a strong believer in the doors, trims. Uh, trim LED like the, instead of doing the if you have recessed cans do those yeah. you know, LED um, right you know, flat cans and the, I mean those are like fifteen bucks a piece and yeah programmable to whatever light shade you like whether it's cool great light, point warm, yep and it just makes everything more modern so agreed yeah. agreed and it's so amazing to me every time we help with the remodel what the tiniest little tweak will do to the space. I mean, getting that cool, old, outdated, whatever bulb that was to something that's more warm and natural. I mean, it's, everything is in a whole new light. So you're right. I mean, we could do Seahawks colors. We can do <laughs> yeah. whatever. <laughs> and those things too. I mean, you find the right contractor and they're doing, I mean, they are, um, I'm not going to say inexpensive, but it is something that you can do um, on a, a budget and it helps you so much more in the, um, the future as far as the value of your property. So you could put 15 grand yeah. into it for those things. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're seeing maybe a 50 to, you know, $85,000 profit on the other side immediately. Um, Great. So that's awesome. Also, you can address them incrementally. 
Yeah. You know, like um, even like the hardwood floors, those are hard because you have to get everything out. It's really like you're upheaving your whole space. So um, like the millwork, the doors, the lighting, plumbing. I mean, you could, it's like bing, bing, bing. Like what are we focusing on this weekend, babe? And then just start checking that stuff off the list. Yep. Or even for contractors for that matter. Yep, for sure. Yeah. Um, do you do anything with landscaping or have any, um, you know, uh, contacts for landscape design or do you do patio designing or any of that? Mm. What we would focus on would be more for the outdoor living spaces. So, um, the out, you know, we do a lot of rugs outside coffee tables, uh, living dining areas outside. We're big on, um, porch swings and, swinging day beds and stuff like that. Um, and then because we like that the whole house would really have a cohesive feel, while we don't do any landscape design, we do like to be a part of the conversation. So as you're entering the house from the outside, now you're in the house and then you're through the house into the backyard, we want it to be a really beautiful sequence of events. So what we would call kind of these thresholds. So you're, you know, really entering in the foyer into the house and then you're on the porch and then you're in the backyard. So, so how you proceed through the spaces is really important, which is why we want to be a part of the conversation so that it really feels intentional. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I would say for different neighborhoods, we've got a few different referrals. Um, uh, we, I really like Scott Holzapple. He, his office is up near Green Lake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds right. And so, but yeah, landscape is really fun in my next life. I'll focus more on that. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. and I think also two people will start planning as we get through, let's say yeah. January, February, you start planning, okay, well, outdoor space, what is it going to take for me to get my, I guess my dream yard? Um, mm -hmm. so that's the next phase right now we're kind of focusing on the interiors at the moment. Yep. But yeah. Yeah, you're right. That will change and it will change quickly, which just means um, plan ahead. Yep. F find your person sooner than later and start making the plan now. So then when you're ready and the weather is nice, you're going to be the one enjoying your space, not planning the space to enjoy in October. 100%. That's like such yeah. Good advice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get on it. Yep. Get on it. <laughs> Um, so talking about that cohesiveness, like when you're walking through a house and the different, um, I guess, textures and layers and woods and metals, are you seeing kind of a specific trend with what's being used right now um, or what your, you know, do's and don'ts, I guess? I think the biggest do is to have some items that duplicate themselves throughout the home. So, and something immediately for me that I would think of would be like mixing metals. We have, you know, yes, you can do a brass faucet in the kitchen and a black faucet in say like the primary bath or the powder room. Um, but there should be some common, I don't always love the word theme, but there should be some common like themes or elements throughout a home. So um, whether it's the line of something or like the shape or really to stay on the materials and, and finishes, like what metals are we seeing? So if that brass is in the kitchen, does it want to flow through the rest of the house? As in maybe in the primary bathroom, it's showing up in like the cabinet hardware or it's showing up in another light fixture there. You don't have to separate rooms by this is the brass room and this is the matte black room and this is the, you know, polished nickel room. To have, you know, you can mix them up from bathroom to bathroom, but I think the beauty is in all of those things showing up throughout the house in a really small way, um, whether it's actual fixtures or, you know, a polished nickel looking frame in the kitchen that works really well with the brass. So, um, so that really is a kind of a baseline for us. How are all of the fixtures fitting together and fixtures, which you know, but um, you know, it's fixtures are the plumbing and the lighting and all of the hardware um, pieces like that, but being really cohesive there. That is kind of the definition of cohesive for us. Also, yeah. we do like to have certain colors roll through the house on a, on a really consistent basis. So if the main living space has some blue in it, um, maybe it's blue and green, and then the master bedroom is maybe more burgundy, literally just throwing out ideas right now. But it's nice for a little bit of blue to make its way throughout the whole space. So then feels really intentional. Um, 
sometimes we want there to be these, you know, a more dramatic progression from say the blue area to the yellow area. But even in the yellow area, like let's make sure that there's a little hint that you're still in the same house. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think yeah. Advice. And I think that that would roll over to the topic of how do you pick paint? <laughs> like yeah. paint and like, you know, cause I mean, we see a lot of crazy stuff. I mean, I had, there was a, uh, <laughs> yes. we once uh, represented that like, honestly, it was fluorescent. One of the rooms was fluorescent green. One was fluorescent, fluorescent orange. There was like a, a mosaic, you know, flower on the, it was just a whole bunch of different, you know, uh, and it made sense with the furniture that was in it kind of, right? Um, sure. But then you remove that furniture and then it's kind of like, okay, well, we're trying to sell this property. We need to change everything back right. to the rules, right? But yeah. how do you how do you pick those, um, the paint tones for a neutral home or, you know, for a project that you're working on? What do you start with and, and how do you um, coach people into to where they, the direction they should go? <laughs> Sure, sure. Well, we are really suckers for light neutral walls. So it's it's the perfect question because I recommend it for just about everybody, just about all of our clients have some type of light neutral wall. Um, we do mix it up, but I'll come there in a second. But um, what we really start with are, well, we all know that there's not just like one white paint. There's got to be like one million white pants, right? So um, we always will start by comparing what else is in the room. So if there's a lot of, say, kind of an original golden oak that we all cherish, right? You know, that's going to call for a particular type of white paint, you know, probably something that does have some warmth to it. Um, I really think it comes down to getting some of those samples from like Benjamin Moore, or Sherman Williams, or wherever your paint is coming from. Start there, tape those things on your wall. And once you hone those down, also, it's all about process of elimination. Don't pick the one that works. Pick the ones that don't work and get them the hell out of the way. Sorry, can I say that? But like, just don't even have to think about them. Yeah. And then you'll see that that list just really shrinks and shrinks. Um, you know, there's a classic white, you know, super white from Benjamin Moore that is, you know, paper white. And then there's some more things like white dove or soji white that have a little bit more warmth or some coolness to them one of our favorites is actually called swiss coffee from benjamin moore yep. if you saw it it would yeah i mean it's probably it's super classic but if you saw it it's like kind of buttery or you know creamy coffee yeah. but then you get it on the wall and it's it's white you know you're not it, it looks great so um also we like white walls a lot one for just natural light and bouncing it around for number two, whatever we're putting on the walls is now the special thing. Like typically for us, it's really great artwork or yeah, some window treatments of some sort to kind of let that be center stage. Paint is so changeable. It doesn't really, it, it doesn't have to hold a lot of weight unless we want it to. Um, so yeah, I mean, neutral light paint all day long. I feel like you asked something else that I didn't answer though. Well, just guiding through. So let's say someone really wants a colorful wall and they have multiple rooms and they want every room to have a different color. Like how do you, um, you know, create a color mm. palette of maybe the same, the shades that are kind of work together. So everything is cohesive or how, how do you go about something like that? Sure. Okay. So let's, um, something that we're working on currently, we're doing a remodel up in Woodenville and she likes the idea of doing this very light, bright, but natural kitchen. So we're kind of using like a mushroomy grayish cabinet. Um, but what she wants to see is more of a darker family room behind that. So what we're going to be doing is more in the foreground of the kitchen is working with some of these darker components so that it physically leads your eye through the space. Um, another example would be say in a foyer, say you're in a really white foyer, but there's a painting on the wall. I've realized I use my hands a lot. Ah. <laughs> um, <laughs> on the foyer, there could be a really great painting of say like, um, you know, a landscape and maybe there's a, a dark bit of blue there. Pull from that painting for that blue to be in the next room. So it really is, that's what I'm speaking of when I say, you know, guide your eye into the space. There's a little hint in the foreground taking you into the next room. Yeah, so you're bouncing around from direct yeah. eye line 
sight, you have something that's kind of guiding you. That's yep. Or, or you know, a theme. Yeah, something. right. Yeah. And our eyes like to do the bounce. They want a little bit of that movement too because it creates a level of interest. It's not just you know, kind of a one hit wonder. We want the interest. Um, next time we can talk about how we don't always need areas of interest. We need some types of calm and, you know, places for your eyes to rest. But, um, but yeah, it's a really great trick to just keep your eyes moving and exploring. Yeah. Thanks. Yep. I'm going to kind of go off topic because it just popped in my head. Um, so picking countertops, um, do you have mm -hmm. like, um, cause there's so many different types of materials out there right now, especially with quartz, you know, being able to do the different mm -hmm. grains that matches marble or granite or, you know, um, do you have something that is like your favorite material to work with or something that's a go-to that maybe isn't like complete budget buster, um, but mm -hmm. would be something that would be good that would be a, um, easy upgrade, mm -hmm. something, you know, cost effective, kind of like your most bang for your buck, but not also the cheapest. Sure. For countertop specifically. Yeah, I think we we sell pentol quartz and Caesar stone all day long. Um, it's not mm -hmm. exactly the most price conscious um, product, mm -hmm. but I will say that the things that are price conscious, uh, they're just not the highest quality. So yeah. sure, you could get something at like a nice entry level right now, but you're going to be disappointed in a few years. Um, there's a there's a big difference in the quartz products out there between, you know, um, I hope these guys aren't listening, but like Pius down in, you know, the Soto district versus driving, you know, the two miles down the street to Pental. Um, mm -hmm. We love their products because also costs are coming down. Demand is going up. So things are a little bit more affordable than they were a few years back even. Um, but Pental and Caesar Stone are great. I think they have some of the best finishes or, or looks or movement in their, um, quartzes. So they look like real stone if that's what you want. Um, but I'm also a really big fan of anything that's natural. So we sell a lot of absolute black granite and it's, you know, it's a super classic product. It's a black countertop but you can get it in some different finishes. So it could have um, kind of a honed finish. So feel really smooth or the leather finish. So there's, um, it's been like sandblasted. Um, also that's one of the more affordable products on the market as well. If you like a black granite. Um, the hard thing is when people really want a natural product, but they want it light like marble. So mm -hmm. that's why so many people are going to the quartz products, but um this is definitely a budget buster, so warning. But our favorite product is called it's a quartzite product, I and it's that that's actually my favorite too right now. Yeah, yeah, I love it, and it's so you're we're getting the durability. It's stronger than granite, actually, and we're getting the light color. Um, also, it's less porous than even quartz is, and so there's a bunch of reasons why we love it, and um, we just know we have to kind of, you know prepare our clients for a little bit of sticker shock, yeah. but that's okay because, you know, we kind of rob from this budget and give it to this budget because it's really worth it. So if I have to buy more affordable hardware, happy to do it. Yeah. That's yeah. so funny that I'm going to uh, shamelessly plug my listing at a uh, 905 because it has nice site and I, it, they're the most beautiful countertops and it's so nice. Cause it's like, you, you could tell it has a little bit of an overhang. So you have, you could see light underneath it. Yeah. And it, right. The marbling of everything. I was just, I was amazed when I saw it for the first time and I was like, what is this? Obviously quartz. So now I'm just purely obsessed with, with quartz. <laughs> yeah, you're right though it is about the lightness of the product and the the way that it radiates i mean there's depth to it it's really um i'm not even afraid to say probably we're, we're going to be shooting some new projects coming up and probably i don't know of the eight projects we'll shoot this year six of them easily have quartz at countertops and i'm not even sad about it it's just it's the perfect fit and you can get a lot of different looks from one, one product like that. Saying anything about like energy to a home? What I always think about for that would be like plants. We have a lot of plants in our office and honestly, whether they're real plants or fake plants, it doesn't even matter. It's just that little bit of green, whether it's like real life or kind of faux life. Um, but I think that that's a really good um, tip and trick for 
you know, even our region, we're kind of in the gray season now. Um, so just that little bit of something goes a really long ways. Um, and then I think it's not only to just declutter the space. I mean, it's, it is about things, but it's also just about, um, again, a little woo woo, but just physically clearing the energy of the space. Yeah, it brings greenery, plants, bring life and energy to a space for sure. I'm, I'm big on that. We have tons of succulents, yeah. and, you know, little plants around our house too, so. Yeah, yeah, it does wonders, the tiniest little thing. Um, is there anything else you wanna to touch on today? What else? Um, well, let's see. Um, one thing that I kind of hinted at in terms of our service is the, you know, the Pinterest and hows. Uh, we can get really lost in that. Even, even I can, because, you know, we use it. Pinterest is a search engine. This is how people are really seeing quality images of this type of floor that they like. Now everyone's going to go to Pinterest and like look up quartzite countertops and they're going to know where we're coming from now. But um, I think to really just remind yourself that the, the things that people are seeing on Pinterest and hows you know, you're seeing so much of them because they're getting a lot of traction. It's like this algorithm, right? You're going to see modern farmhouse because everyone's been searching for modern farmhouse less so now. Um, but we're okay with that. And so it's kind of like this pay to play idea. You know, you're being, you're being kind of pumped with these ideas that you're already familiar with. And so that's why, you know, it, we're going in these big cycles of, of styles and movement. But I think one of my biggest tips for our clients is to really think about what it is that you like about an image and to see how it fits into your space and, and to not just do what Pinterest does or to do what Instagram does. Um, you know, we do have clients come to us and say, you know, we want this thing, um, which we're happy to do for them, but also we want to inject them into their own space as well, um, not just to have the space that you know, Chip and Joanna Gaines created for themselves. It can be, you know, more for you guys. We're actually hearing that a lot less recently, which is fantastic. But um, to just get out of that, I mean, it can be kind of a really vicious cycle. And then you've got a thousand images, 90% of which don't even apply to you. And so to just kind of keep that in mind and, and don't be afraid to go old school and open up a magazine instead or you know, really um, some of those coffee table books you have or, or be inspired by something that's not a digital image. Yeah, you know what yeah. helps with that? Um, you know, going to Pacific Galleries, um, which is the oh, antique. Yeah. Have you you've been? Yeah, like going uh, to those yeah. type of like consignment shops. Like, um, it's funny because I feel like aesthetics and your interior design, it is kind of, it's fa like fashion, right? It comes back yeah. around and they're, and so, we are, um, our vibe is a little bit more eclectic, I think, than the normal person for Mark and I. Um, and sure. I think a lot of the inspiration comes from um, sustainable, what you said, honest materials, um, comes from um, you know, vintage stores, consignment pieces, things that have history. I think that's something yeah. that we will always kind of build into our home and our general style. But that's not yeah. for every, everyone, right? So then, then you have a whole nother group of people that are like, no, I want brand new, or I want super sure. sleek and contemporary, very minimalist. So you kind of have to, it's almost like you're a psychiatrist because you kind of have to get into their how like, you know, it's true. Like showing you kind of have to get to the of it and peel back the layers. Yeah, exactly. And, and cool. we're, we're not afraid to show someone that's, you know, show someone something that's really out of their character, to be honest, to just shuffle it up a little bit. If they haven't seen it yeah. before, they probably don't even know that they like it or don't like it. So, so yeah, we're happy to yep. put some crazy things in front of you. All right. Well, thank you so much for um, joining me today. It's been nice yeah. to be chatting with you. Um, Anything else you want to touch on? I know you offer um, some free consulting uh, or just a phone chat for people who are interested in yep. your brain. Yeah, exactly. You can, uh, we're on Instagram as I'm ragging on it. Uh, we are still active on Instagram. Um, so uh, we're at White Label Interiors there. We're on Facebook as well, but don't hesitate to reach out, you know, we're, we totally offer, you know, free 15 minute consultations. Um, and, you know, you and I can talk about if there's a few of your listeners and, 
and participants, you know, want a more in-depth consultation, happy to help out your team. So cool. let us know. Uh, awesome. Well, thank you, Stacy. Really appreciate it. Um, and if there's any other follow-up questions, just let me know. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yep. Take care. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Bye.